This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. If you need the cards for this deck or anything magic related, they got you. And they also got the cooler versions of cards like this goose right here. God damn, that's beautiful. Link is in the description down below. Well, hello there, random person on the internet who, looking at the thumbnail, probably thought this is already the Halloween-themed episode, but uh, no. Today's deck just has a lot of death, slaughter and destruction. Just a regular massacre. A Junkwinder massacre. <laughs> oh god, let's get into the deck. Looking at today's decklist, you will notice that a lot of these cards create various forms of tokens like food, clues, treasures or like Jadar, zombie tokens. Now if we have a Chatterfang, every time we create a token, we create an additional Skrill token. And now look at this beauty. With affinity for tokens, we can cast Junkwinder for cheap and tap something down whenever we create another token. Like this zombie and Skrill. Now that's the Junkwinder part, but what about the Massacre? Well, since Junkwinder technically costs 7 mana, we can neoform it into an 8 drop and ooh, what's this? A Crater of Behemoth? Well, don't mind if I do. Swing for the casual 104 damage on turn 5. <laughs> now that's plan A of the deck. There's also plan B and C involving combos for infinite removal, card draw, life and mana, but I will go over this while it's happening so we can jump right into the action. Okay, game number one with a pretty good opening hand, although we do have to shock in that breeding pool here because we want to play the pathway on the blue side so we can play a junk winder later. Ooh, okay, that's a mountain, but no turn one play, so I guess that's fine. Play the pathway and play Chatterfang. Opponent, Mountain and Conspicuous Snoop and Skirk Prospector on top, so good old goblins. Let's draw a land here. <laughs> Prosperous Innkeeper, next best thing to a land though, so that's fine. Play it, create a treasure, which will create a scribble. Swing for three, opponent plays a mountain, Goblin Chieftain pumps up the Snoop, swings in for three. We draw another Prosperous Innkeeper instead of a land, no problem. Play the Innkeeper, create a Squirrel and a treasure, gain some life and swing in for three. Opponent plays a Crankle, so we can't really afford having this on the battlefield with haste. So let's use Chatterfang's activated ability to Squirrels, plus two, minus two and Crankle enters without haste. We apparently do not draw lands this game, <laughs> draw Lonis, play it, gain some life and pass the turn. Opponent plays a Mountain and Goblin Matron off the top. Now let's see what they're gonna get here. Ooh, interesting choice, a Marxus. Who would have thought? They play a Wily Goblin, create a treasure and tap Cranko to create four goblins. Aha, there's a land, uh, play it. Um, we can't really afford them playing Maxus and untapping with Cranko, so let's make sure Cranko doesn't untap. Neoform on the Gilded Goose, get another Prosperous Innkeeper, which will create a treasure by itself and a clue with bonus. Both of these tokens will create a scroll, reducing the Winder's mana cost to only two blue mana. Create a clue, create a scroll, trigger the Winder two times so we can tap down two creatures, tap down Cranko and uh, the Goblin Matron. So uh, my original plan was to destroy the Conspicuous Snoop, but then I remembered it's probably better to destroy their Skirk Prospector before Maxus hits the battlefield. A bit of an oopsie here, um, let's hope we get away with it. Opponent, Goblin Matron on top, so at least they get this with Maxus. Prospector, oh, just Maxus by himself. Uh, okay, it's probably still gonna be busted though. They get the Matron and a Goblin Instigator, that's actually fine. Matron gets a Chieftain to pump up the team and give him haste. Uh -huh, pretty lucky they forgot to play the Prospector, although we would have killed it. Talking about killing things with Chatterfang though, let's kill the Cranko end of turn. Land? Ugh, tap land, sure. Um, I don't know if we have a chance here. Uh, play the Ovenwald Mysteries. So at least we can use Lonis activated ability to sacrifice X clues, look at the top X cards of our opponent's library and put a non-land permanent with mana cost X or less onto the battlefield. Although looking at the top of the library, it doesn't seem uh, too promising since I see a land on top there. But sacrificing these clues will trigger the Ovenwald Mysteries, giving us two human tokens, also two scrolls 
Squirrel tokens, which will all gain us life with the Prosperous Innkeeper and trigger the Junkwinder to tap down the big attackers. Still not sure if that's enough though, because their turn is gonna be pretty wild. That's a Goblin War Sheaf, Skirk Prospector, Goblin Matron finding, yeah, probably Cranko. Yep, there it is. Play Cranko, tap it to create 12 goblins. Then play a chieftain, pump the team, give them haste, and move to attack us. So, well, let's see if we can survive here. We do have a lot of life, at least. Yep, each of these tokens will set off a chain of triggers. So, let's just uh, click through them all here. And Lornis. Holy boy! That is actually so good though, what? <laughs> okay, so let me break this down because this is gonna be a bit chaotic. Wily Goblin will enter the battlefield, gaining us three life with the innkeepers, creating a treasure by itself and a clue with Lonus. Both of these tokens will create squirrels, so we get six more life with the innkeepers. And since four tokens enter the battlefield, we get to tap down four more blockers with the winder. So this honestly incredibly lucky hit here, just gained us nine life, one treasure, two scrolls, one clue, and four tap activations. And we can even use the treasure to blow out our opponent by removing the chieftain here, if they even choose to attack anymore. And I can't believe we got away with this. I think we survived this turn and I think we might actually have a shot here, even though we missed three land drops in a row. Wow, what a lucky hit here. Yep, opponent doesn't even attack. Uh, now we draw a land. So let's sacrifice a clue, create a human token and get yep, all the triggers again. And that's a Yark Morph. Now we can sacrifice all these creatures to kill the important goblins. And this is actually, I wow, I think we got away with it here. Yep, yep. <laughs> what? Okay then. Kind of felt like uh, we got away with a crime here. <laughs> so opponent probably shocked that they played Muxus and didn't win the game on the spot. You rarely see this. <laughs> Wait, what? what's this? Oh God, it's the YouTube algorithm. I think it's checking if you like the video. Oh, you did? Sweet. Next game. <laughs> wow, <laughs> now that's a mulligan. Ooh, that's a pretty good hand though. Now I know the deck is called the Junkwinder Massacre, but these three cards alone may win us the game. So let's bottom the winder, play a land, pass the turn, opponent plays a forest. We draw another land, play an innkeeper, create a treasure. Opponent plays a swamp and rents run Wankrisha. I forgot that this card was on arena. Ooh, nice. We draw Lonis, play Lonis, play Jadar, create a clue. And end of turn, create a zombie and gain a life. A opponent plays a forest and power world kill on our Lonus. Swings in for three. Pitiless Plunderer, that is actually very good. Play Yarkmoth and now we have to fight the arena interface here. So keep your trigger finger on the full control button because arena will reset it every phase. So we have to hit it right as our creatures are dealing damage to get priority after damage is dealt. Sweet, we hit it. Okay, let's use Yarkmoth. Pay a life, sacrifice a creature, put a minus one minus one counter on target creature and draw a card. Sacrifice the zombie and draw a Neoform. So if we draw a land, we might win next turn. Okay. End of turn, we create a zombie and gain a life. A opponent, Lanova Visionary, draws a card, passes back. It's a land, okay. Play Pettiness Plunderer. So now whenever a creature dies, we create a treasure token so we can use Yarkmoth to sacrifice the zombie, which will create a treasure, draw a card. We can use the mana from that treasure to neoform our Jedi into a three drop, which big surprise will be Shatterfang. And now we have to sacrifice our innkeeper to create another treasure, which will create a squirrel. So now we are almost infinite. Plague Prosperous Innkeeper, which will counteract the life loss from Yakmov's ability. Now let's blow up their board here. Sacrifice a squirrel, create a treasure and a squirrel, draw a card. One more time here and now we're at the point where we have to target our own squirrels. That's fine though, we still get infinite mana and infinite card draw. Okay, no, opponent does not want to watch the show. Uh, understandable, but I guess that means I have to show you the combo another way. I'm sorry Sparky, here we are with a similar board state. We do have some more tokens, but all we need is two squirrel tokens here. Target one squirrel and sacrifice another one. Both of them will die and create a treasure and squirrel. And we can repeat this loop forever until we've drawn our entire deck and created all the treasures on the way so we can play our entire deck. But what we're really looking for is that crater of Behemoth so we can play it. 
and a swing in for all the damage we want. I didn't play any extra creatures here. You get the point. Infinite life, infinite mana, infinite card draw is usually enough to win the game. Quick little side note here, because Yakmov's and Chatterfang's ability sacrifice the creature as the casting cost, you could theoretically hold full control and repeat the same trigger before the first run resolves. The problem with this is these triggers will fizzle as soon as the creature dies, so you won't draw infinite cards from just one creature. It can help you with gaining infinite life or infinite mana though. I go over this in my article, so <laughs> you should probably check that out and now next game Ooh, that's a pretty cool hand while we saw plan b of the deck last game this time we have toski which is part of plan c so let's see what we can do play a land pass the turn opponent steam vents tapped we play a land play lonus opponent shocks in a breeding pool and paradise through it in team or colors that's very frightening, okay. We draw Jadar, so let's play Prosperous Innkeeper, get a clue, and Jadar, get a clue, and gain a life, and end of turn, create a zombie, gain a life, and let's see if our opponent has it here, place a land, <laughs> oh god, Seagate Stormcaller, and Neoform, and we are dead. If you don't know what's happening here, the deck is called Neostorm, and it's a pretty bad matchup if they have the combo. Um, pretty good moment to talk about the bad matchups of our deck here. As you saw here, quick combos like Neostorm and Vesperlark Withering are pretty good against us because we don't have much interaction and the interaction that we have sits on the battlefield so our opponent can play around it. Also early interaction combined with Agro, especially with Flyers, is pretty good against our deck so Delva and Phoenix are both pretty bad matchups. But you can't win them all and the deck is still crazy fun to play so time for another game then. Uh, next game here with uh, yeah, the old 1-2 Gilded Goose into Chatterfang, so that's a key. Play a land, play the goose, create a food, pass the turn. Our opponent plays a plains and speaker of the heavens. We draw a backup Chatterfang here, play one and pass the turn. Our opponent plays a plains, soul warden. Oh, this is gonna be so much editing here. And a Sarah Ascendant gains a life. We draw a land, nope, Gilded Goose create a food and a scroll and they gain a life. Yeah, I'm not gonna mention this every time it happens. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, they gain a life. This counts for our creatures as well, so yeah, there's gonna be a lot of triggering here. Griffin Airy, and there's the land, so play a Woe Strider, create a gold and a scroll, which will gain our opponent life. Swing in, they block with the Sarah Ascendant. Okay, up to 27, so maybe they just want to activate their Speaker of the Heaven. They might also play a Binding Grace. We'll find out. And a Heliod, Ugh, so whenever they gain life, they can place a counter on something. Sure, tap the Speaker, create an Angel, get a life, get a counter and pass uh, the turn. We draw a Prosperous Innkeeper, play it, create a treasure and a scroll, which will grow their team, play a Junk Winder, and uh, pass uh, the turn. Opponent, a Resplendent Angel, that's pretty good. Turning Heedot into a creature so they can swing in. We block and sacrifice a land to the bottom. The opponent creates an angel, gains a life and a counter. End of turn, we sacrifice a scroll to maybe find a new form, a land to the bottom. Draw another land, maybe we should have scryed one more time here. Play the land and pass the turn. Opponent, Sarah Ascendant, get some triggers, create an angel, more triggers. And before attackers, we create a food token and a scroll token, which will both trigger the junk winder so we can tap down their angels. Swings in with the resplendent angel and gives it a lifelink with Heliod. So they will get an angel and a griffin end of turn. And we forget to scry for Neoform again. Draw Lonis, which is uh, very sweet actually. Play Lonis, they get some triggers. Play a junk winder, which will create a clue and a scroll. And all of these tokens will trigger our junk winder. So tap down four of their creatures. Their board is pretty impressive, but mostly tapped down, so we are not in too bad of a situation right here. Unless they have a Jani, then we are done, but <laughs> let's not think about this. Our opponent plays a Soulmender, they swing in, we block, they give lifelink, we sacrifice to scry, land to the bottom, hit us for four with lifelink, create an angel, get their triggers, end of turn, resplendent angel creates an angel, and griffin airy creates a griffin. 
Wow, <laughs> okay. Uh, oops, I think we should have scryed for Neoform here end of turn, but we do draw a Prosperous Innkeeper, which will create a treasure, a clue, all the tokens, all the triggers. I'm just gonna talk over this because even if I don't edit this, it's confusing as hell at this point. So um, yeah, next turn we will scry to find the Neoform to close this out, because if they play in a Ajani, uh, that'd be pretty bad actually. So uh, pass the turn. Opponent plays another Resplendent Angel, not like we'd care too much here. They activate Solomander and speak of the heavens, all the triggers. Before attacks, we create a food which will set off our triggers. Tap down the attackers, they create a griffin, get even more triggers. And well, it's time. Let's search for this new form here. Land to the bottom, tracker to the bottom, land to the bottom, Yagmoth to the bottom. Neoform on top. Now our opponent is at 62 life, but you know how it is with Kratos Behemoth. It's always lethal. I'm not even gonna do the math here. Neoform, the Junkwinder, trigger everything one last time and swing in for, I don't know, I'm not gonna do the math here. That is a GG. You might be wondering, what if they get even more life? Well, our deck can go so crazy that they can't really get enough life to counteract our devastating Crater Hoof turn. I did it here against Sparky, but then realized there's no real use in it because obviously I can do thousands of damage. But I thought it might be an interesting thing to show you another thing here, which is an alternative way to win the game if you don't have a Crater Hoof Behemoth anymore. You can draw your deck and then activate Joriel and get your team big enough to kill them regardless of Crater of Behemoth. Uh, just for the clip here, I do play Crater of Behemoth. Yeah, it does 900 damage, whatever. We could have done so much more. It's not really worth it against Sparky and uh, wow. Four games already, so I don't think we have time for a bonus game. Remember to tap that like button, subscribe to the channel and ignore the part about the missing bonus game because BONUS GAME! Oh, this deck is just way too sweet to not have a bonus game here, right? So, pretty good hand. Opponent plays a tap land. We play a tap land. Our opponent shocks in a breeding pool, Mindstone, and Giganta as companion. So, they're probably Timor Paradox engine combo. And we draw a Junkwinder, play Lonis. Opponent plays a land. Yep, Kinnon. So, they're definitely the combo deck. Gets Giganta into their hand. Shock in a land, cast Chatterfang, create a clue, create a scroll, and pass the turn. Opponent, place a land, and Giganta, sure. We, ooh, there's a land, play it. Play Prosperous in Keeper, create a clue, and treasure, and two scrolls. So, <laughs> Junk Grinder only costing two now, creating a clue, and tapping things down, and we can use the treasure for black mana. Sacrifice two scrolls to kill that Kinnon. But that's actually a pretty good turn here, and we can even swing in a 4 4. Opponent plays a land, plays an Emery, mills, ooh, Mox Ember, and a Tamio, and gets it back with Balagat Recovery. Uh, so if we had two black mana here, we would have a way to win the game. I'm not gonna explain it. If you see the winning line, let me know in the comments, but we don't have any black mana actually, so let's play Joriel, tap down their board, play another Junkwinder and a swing in for 12, which is not enough. So if our opponent has it here, that's pretty tilting. Oh boy, that's a bad sign. No, that's so bad. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Paradox engine into Lanova Elf, untaps their entire board. Oh boy, this is brutal. Tap Emery to get back the Mox Ember. Untap everything, tap everything again. Play Tamio, untap everything. Plus Tamio for Khan. Of course they hit a Khan. <sighs> and mill a Mind Stone. I can't believe this. Play it, untap everything, tap everything. Play a Khan. Although now they only have three mana for regular artifacts because Giganta's mana only taps four color symbols. But well, they got to have something in their sideboard here. <laughs> Minus Khan. Bruh. And it's a Golos. W what's happening? Did they? I think they got bamboozled by Giganta. Yeah, Giganta doesn't pay for Golos. And that's only a Paradox engine in the grave. No way. No way. <laughs> Ah, what?
And that is it for the gameplay. You might have been wondering why is this deck called the Junkwinder Massacre and doesn't feature the card the Meat Hook Massacre, especially if it is a win condition with our combo. Creature dies, opponent loses life, infinite damage. Seems pretty good. In play testing though, the card felt like a brick because it really only works with our combo. But if you check out my article, I go over ways to rebuild the deck to focus more on the combo plan. So check that out and well, that's it for this video. Remember to tap that like button, subscribe to the channel to not miss another video and well, I'll see you in the next one.